boat and their vessel. They had firearms. Uh, they had drugs. They had night vision gear. Uh, and we're gangs run over 80% of Port-au-Prince. Now the U.S. military is sending an anti-terrorism team to protect. With the port now being closed, uh, the, the, the real risk is that the 1.6 million people in Port-au-Prince were acutely food insecure. He's deploying more than 250 state officers and soldiers to secure the southern coast of Florida. Haiti is a failed state right now. The Biden administration officials I was speaking with couldn't distinguish Haiti from a failed state a wave of Haitian migrants. Authorities in Florida fear that the unrest and bloodshed in Haiti will lead to a spike in the number of people trying to enter the country by boat. The Coast Guard reports that it has not observed a rise in the number of Haitians trying the perilous voyage thus far. However, Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida says he wants to be prepared. In addition to state and National Guard soldiers, he is dispatching about 250 officers to the southern region of the state. Some leaders who are Haitian-American think politics is more important than readiness. Florida is home to about half a million Haitians. The state has long been a popular resort for those escaping the political unrest and economic hardships that plague the island. The crisis is being closely watched by the big Haitian-American population in Florida. Born and raised in Haiti, Tessa Petit is the current director of the advocacy organization Florida Immigrant Coalition. People in Haiti are living in complete panic, she says, having communicated with people on the island. Grocery stores don't carry food. People's food supply is running low. The electricity is off. It's really hard to communicate, and dread is a way of life for many. DeSantis claims that the guard personnel he is dispatching, in conjunction with state law enforcement officials, will assist in stopping any migrants who try to enter the U.S. by boat from Haiti and will then turn them over to the Coast Guard. Governor DeSantis is deploying the state guard to the Keys to prevent what he believes could be a potential influx of illegal immigrants. Haiti is a failed state right now. The Biden administration officials I was speaking with couldn't distinguish Haiti from a failed state. Where there's been an increase for over a year now of Haitian migrants who are coming over because of the violence and because of people like... Meanwhile, Border Patrol officials are warning agents to prepare for an uptick in the number of Haitian migrants coming into the U.S. Given the situation that's happening in Haiti, he continues, some brutal reports that are happening, we want to make sure we're protecting Floridians. Speaking at a press conference, DeSantis announced plans to toughen Florida's laws against unauthorized immigrants. Later that day, he reiterated his concerns about the possible harm that any wave of Haitian migrants could bring to Florida in an interview with Fox News. He stated, we want to be ready. At our press conference today, I was asked, why are you doing this when there hasn't actually been a massive influx yet? What are you meant to do? Wait for it to happen? I said. We are therefore positioning our resources to be prepared to protect the state. Since October, the Coast Guard reports that it has apprehended and returned approximately 130 migrants to Haiti. Furthermore, since the recent unrest started there, there hasn't been an increase in interdictions. The way DeSantis and other Republicans are portraying a humanitarian situation for one of the U.S.'s closest neighbors, according to Petit, has disappointed her. The narrative now is that immigrants are the enemy, she states. The criminals are us. We are the ones who stole. The drug traffickers are us. The way our governor is handling the situation in the state with the largest Haitian community is regrettable and depressing a potential influx of vessels carrying illegal immigrants from places like Haiti. State Department and Pentagon are on alert and keeping a close eye on what's happening on the ground in Haiti. Are bracing for a possible surge of Haitian refugees packing into boats and arriving on our shores. Well, with the chaos in Haiti getting even worse, Governor Ron DeSantis says the state is ramping up its response to possible mass migration. Concerning the threat that they see the Haitian issue to be to Floridians, other Republican politicians are now sounding the alarm. Three Republican members of Congress from Florida, including U.S. Representative Matt Gates, are requesting that President Biden announce a anticipated mass migration of aliens. Floridians and the rest of the American public will not tolerate your administration again, opening the floodgates for countless unvetted foreign nationals, wrote Florida Senators Rick Scott and Marco Rubio in a letter to President Biden. 
State Representative Doty Joseph was born in Haiti and serves a predominantly Haitian district in North Miami. DeSantis' remarks on being prepared for a tide of migrants are referred to by her as political grandstanding. She is one of several leaders who identify as Haitian American, urging the governor to assist in blocking the flow of firearms from Florida that supplies weapons to gangs on the island. According to a UN assessment from the previous year, the U.S., especially Florida, is Haiti's main supplier of weapons and ammunition. If DeSantis wanted to send law enforcement to do something productive as opposed to for show, says Joseph, then he would work with our federal partners to make sure that they're helping screen not just at our ports, but at a lot of the private places along the Miami River, where we know these things are coming from. Joseph adds that the U.S. ought to treat Haitians with dignity in the event of a migration wave. Augmenting our resources in southern Florida with respect to warding off. And Governor Ron DeSantis is taking action to make sure Florida is prepared for a possible mass migration. Response to the current crisis in Haiti, the Caribbean country is in the midst of a political meltdown. Where areas where that chaos is happening, we know that there are a number of U.S. citizens that are literally stranded. Plans revealed this week by a U.S. military official to potentially harbor Haitian migrants apprehended at sea at the naval station in Guantanamo, Cuba, worry her. Seeking asylum or refugee status is not something that is criminal, Joseph asserts. It's allowed. Furthermore, it is simply intolerable to treat individuals like criminals under these kinds of detention procedures, whether they are at Guantanamo or somewhere else. Even DeSantis concedes that there may not be a boat-borne migration wave. More Haitians have entered the country illegally through the southern border than by risky boat from Haiti to Florida in recent years. Martha's Vineyard as an option On Tuesday, Governor Ron DeSantis proposed that Florida support another round of migrant flights, this time utilizing the contentious state-funded initiative to bring in Haitians who have fled the unrest, engulfing their island nation. The remarks were made during an appearance on a podcast run by conservative radio presenter Dana Loesch. Florida, which has one of the highest communities of Haitians and Haitian Americans in the U.S., is preparing for a possible inflow of migrants from Haiti. The governor, a Republican, stated, We do have our transport program additionally that's going to be operational. Haitians arrive in the Florida Keys. Martha's Vineyard could be their next destination. In light of the political unrest in Haiti and the news of gangs breaking into jails and potentially freeing a large number of criminals onto the streets, DeSantis and the Republican senators from Florida have been pressuring the Biden administration to implement tougher immigration laws. Even though the country has descended into turmoil and its residents are facing homelessness and hunger, Florida has not yet experienced a significant surge of migrants from Haiti. There is no, by all accounts, no evidence right now of a pending mass exodus from Haiti. It's kind of not an if but when situation. We'll see some migrants from Haiti attempting to come into the United States. Rafts of water and radios, but they're only dropped in certain occasions, either when the migrant vessels capsize. Free and chaos. Florida's governor deploying more patrols to the state's southern coast and plans to install new leadership in Haiti. The DeSantis administration last week sent dozens of officers and troops, along with helicopters, drones, and sea craft, to South Florida in response to the turmoil in Haiti in order to assist in searching the keys for vessels that may be arriving from the nation. DeSantis said on Tuesday that agents with the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission had recently stopped a Haitian boat, discovering 25 individuals inside, five of whom were unaccompanied minors. They also claimed to have discovered drugs, weapons, and night vision equipment. Boat in their vessel, they had firearms, they had drugs, they had night vision gear uh, and were... Governor says he is preparing now for a potential wave of migrants coming from Haiti to Florida. But there is certainly plenty of history for that. And with all of the focus right now on the border and border security... With the port now being closed, uh, the, the, the real risk is that the 1.6 million people in Port-au-Prince were acutely food insecure. DeSantis remarked, Look, Dana, I have to defend my state. I already have enough problems dealing with folks moving into Florida who are fleeing blue states, DeSantis claims. However, 
that Florida is getting ready for further action by picking up where it left off, moving migrants from the Texas border to liberal strongholds in the Northeast, such as Martha's Vineyard and Sacramento to the West. DeSantis frequently utilized the surge in migrants at the southern border and illegal immigration as a political weapon against the Biden administration, particularly during his brief presidential campaign in January. One of the toughest anti-illegal immigration laws in the nation was also signed into law by DeSantis last year. It forbids undocumented immigrants from driving in the state, even if they possess a valid license from another state, and mandates that hospitals that accept Medicaid patients inquire about their immigration status from their patients. Liberals around the nation protested over Florida's first migration flights from Texas to Martha's Vineyard in September 2022, and the U.S. Department of Treasury's Inspector General and a Texas sheriff launched investigations and lawsuits in response. Millions of dollars are still available to the DeSantis administration for the program, which in June dispatched two flights of migrants to Sacramento in protest of federal immigration laws and as a jab at Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom. If they cross in Texas or Arizona, I firmly believe we can assist in getting them back over the border, DeSantis declared. I'd be happy to assist with that. I believe there is nothing else the states can do. He's deploying more than 250 state officers and soldiers to secure the southern coast of Florida. Governor DeSantis holding a news conference today after announcing he was sending patrols to the Keys to stop migrants fleeing the country. DeSantis adds Florida Highway Patrol will also send deputies and drones for surveillance. Mobay is going to be used if it's Coast Guard. If the Coast Guard interdict, interdicts them and the Coast Guard does not allow them. Stopping the boats. A boat carrying 25 Haitians was halted off the coast of Florida, according to Governor Ron DeSantis, as law enforcement resources were sent in to thwart potential migrants from the island nation that is seeing an upsurge in unrest and crime. DeSantis announced the signing of three laws that he claimed were intended to discourage illegal immigration during a news conference in Polk County on Friday. DeSantis claims that within the last several weeks, Agents from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission halted the boat that was transporting 25 Haitians close to Sebastian Inlet. DeSantis added that police discovered weapons, cocaine, and night vision equipment on board the boat. The information was released a few days after DeSantis declared he had dispatched over 250 law enforcement personnel to the Florida Keys in an effort to halt the anticipated surge in the number of Haitian migrants escaping turmoil in their homeland. Governor DeSantis has also called for 250 law enforcement officers, including state guardsmen, to come tonight. What are we doing to prepare for that wave? and to ensure that these Now, since October 1st of 2022, the Coast Guard has interdicted over 5,100 Cubans. Existed before, there were 1.6 million people in Port-au-Prince who didn't have enough to eat. Before this crisis, this is making things worse. A string of gang attacks in Haiti in recent days has left the nation immobilized and thousands of people displaced from their homes, particularly in the capital city of Port-au-Prince, where the port and airport are still closed. After President Jovenel Moise was assassinated in 2021, armed gangs took control of a large portion of Port-au-Prince and currently hold around 80% of the city. Officers from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the Florida Water Commission, the Florida National Guard, and the Florida State Guard are among the group dispatched to the Keys. In order to assist in containing migrants, the state will also send out eight sea craft, four helicopters, one plane and drones. But Governor Ron DeSantis says Florida will do whatever it has to to protect its shores. Gangs run over 80% of Port-au-Prince. Now the U.S. military is sending an anti-terrorism team to protect. And we're told that the violence has now spread to more affluent areas in the northern part of uh, Port-au-Prince. Uh, U.S. citizens, Florida residents, obviously, who are in harm's way given what's going on in Haiti. And given the situation that's happening in Haiti, some brutal reports that are happening, we want to make sure that we're protecting Floridians, DeSantis stated on Friday. According to a news release, since October 1, the Coast Guard has returned 131 migrants who were found at sea to Haiti, including 65 on Tuesday who were discovered on a boat close to the Bahamas last week.
According to DeSantis, Florida resources have already helped the U.S. Coast Guard stop boats off Florida. Since January 2023, they have assisted in stopping 670 boats that were carrying more than 13,500 illegal immigrants. We've got an incredible amount of resources that are now on display to be able to prevent, DeSantis stated. The federal government is primarily responsible for this. We are not actually responsible for it. The Coast Guard is undermanned while doing an excellent job overall. DeSantis signed a number of bills, including one that toughens penalties for those who drive without a valid license, prohibits Florida jurisdictions from accepting identification documents obtained by undocumented immigrants from other states, and increases penalties for those who commit crimes in the state after being deported. Farmlands to Battlefields Federal statistics indicate that approximately 0.03% of farmland in America is owned by Chinese investors. However, as provincial and federal governments intensify their efforts to counter perceived Chinese threats, their acquisition of land is turning into a significant concern. Legislators in over 20 states have approved or are considering passing legislation that prohibits Chinese buyers of American farms in the last few months. Following that, Chinese investors' ownership of U.S. farms mostly stagnated until 2019. Over 136,000 acres more of farmland were held by Chinese people in 2021 than there were in 2019. However, nearly all of this growth came from purchases made by American businesses that had Chinese investors. A select committee on strategic competition between the U.S. and the Chinese Communist Party was established by the newly elected Republican majority in the House of Representatives in an attempt to make China a significant topic of discussion. Representative Dan Newhouse, a Republican on the committee, has filed legislation to forbid the Chinese government from purchasing agricultural land in the U.S. on multiple occasions. During the first meeting of the committee in late February, Newhouse stated, I've always said that food security is literally national security. H. R. McMaster, a former national security advisor to President Trump, who testified during the session, concurred that this is a worrying issue. He claimed that a deliberate effort is being made by the Chinese government to isolate American agriculture from China. Restrictions on Chinese purchases of American farmland have drawn criticism from some who claim they could exacerbate anti-Asian prejudice. Representative Grace Meng questioned a new House amendment last year during a hearing by the House Appropriations Committee that sought to prohibit businesses that are fully or partially owned by the Chinese government from acquiring farmland in the U.S. China's special treatment, according to her, will perpetuate already rising anti-Asian hate. Meng stated, other nations should also be included in this conversation if the concern is about U.S. national security. Researcher Naysun Mabudi of the University of Pennsylvania's Center for the Study of Contemporary China stated that negative discourse about China has the potential to be harmful. He remarked, once we identify something as threatening, we're not very good about talking about it in a nuanced and subtle way in our American political culture. Speaking about China's threats in a nuanced way is vital, according to Mabubi, especially considering the volume of trade that the U.S. has with China. We're worried about how actions China takes will affect our food security, and China may worry about how actions we take will affect their food security until we're caught in this kind of downward spiral, Mabubi stated. I don't think anyone can really predict how bad it could get or how far it will spread. TikTok and National Security Three possible sources of danger have been identified by recent legislation in the House of Representatives that addresses the issue of national security dangers associated with TikTok use. First, TikTok is a component of a dishonest Chinese government influence campaign aimed at influencing American politics. The second is that Americans' personal information may be gathered via TikTok. The third is that installing TikTok on phones or other devices freely makes it possible for China to insert dangerous software. Serious risk is only created by the third source. In general, influence efforts are exaggerated. Survey data indicates that external forces may not be the primary cause of the threat to American democracy. The issue 
is internal. Although several solutions have been put out to address this issue, not all of them are workable. Although it is unfeasible, forcing ByteDance, the parent firm of TikTok, to sell the prized and extremely profitable assets to a U.S. owner could lower risk. China might take offense. It has already imposed export restrictions on TikTok software, and it might force American corporations to divest as retaliation. Beijing might not have opposed the divestiture, even in this case, because TikTok is extremely valuable. Some estimate its value at over $200 billion, and there aren't many or any purchasers with this kind of money. China's potential to retaliate is increased when ByteDance is forced to sell at a lower price. To get around U.S. laws, TikTok may choose not to divest and instead open up shop in a third nation. It has already discussed doing this in Ireland, store its data there, and run its business. Lastly, the U.S. shouldn't follow the Putin regime's practice of forcing fire sales of prized assets. The Russian social media platform Vikontakte is an excellent example. Significant, probably insurmountable barriers stand in the way of TikTok's ban in terms of First Amendment-protected free speech. Additionally, the Berman Amendment restricts the use of punishment statutes for speech restriction. These barriers have prevented previous attempts to outlaw TikTok, and although his administration is aware that any action taken against the platform must pass judicial scrutiny, a ban would probably be met with protracted legal challenges and ultimately fail. Using TikTok's intention to use an initial public offering to sell the company's shares to the market would be a more practical strategy. As U.S. lawmakers move forward with legislation that could potentially ban TikTok, China is warning of repercussions. You're able to capture a significant amount of intelligence, not just about your own behavior, but your circles of friends' behavior. ByteDance to sell the app or face a nationwide ban. American data stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. The current owners of TikTok would be able to rightfully benefit from the company's success through an IPO. Although TikTok would want to accomplish this on Wall Street, Beijing might insist that Shanghai be the location of its IPO. Investors in TikTok would prefer to cash out through an IPO, and a Wall Street IPO would give the Committee on Foreign Investment a means of becoming involved and putting restrictions on the IPO to reduce risk. Establishing external monitoring of TikTok software and upgrades through a third-party review would be the most crucial of them. An oversight board composed of citizens of the U.S. with security clearances would be one strategy, a frequent CFIUS procedure. A CFIUS agreement may include monitoring data flows and restrictions on the new entity's ability to keep personal data, who can access it, and how it can be used. To lower risk, CFIUS can demand more openness into the new entity's operations. These steps are similar to what TikTok had suggested in its Project Texas plan. However, Project Texas had the fatal fault of having TikTok police itself, and CFIUS might mandate that an outside party handle oversight and compliance. The issue of Chinese software usage in American networks and applications is more extensive and complex. Some popular American apps contain Chinese software components. The Department of Commerce's Office of Information and Communications Technology and Services, which oversees the Information and Communication Technology and Services program, should take the following initial steps to address the issue. Use its survey authorities to ascertain the extent of the issue and determine what additional authorities it would need, since it currently primarily depends on the International Emergency Economic Powers Act to compel the removal of Chinese software that poses a risk to national security. It's conceivable that the Chinese government could go, we don't trust Tesla with that information unless uh, it TikTok says it's invested more than one and a half billion dollars to address concerns and argues U.S. data could be less secure. Collect and aggregate your data. Um, many of these companies are subject to at least some constraints in terms of privacy legislations. TikTok can continue to function while minimizing risk, thanks to legislation and executive branch authorities. More comprehensive measures might be enacting a national privacy law at last, increasing openness in software supply chains, 
and limiting situations in which using Chinese technology poses a risk. While hazards associated with Chinese technology, especially those related to TikTok, can be reduced, not all risks are created equal. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.